There are no naturally evolved wild dogs that can match a lion, a tiger, or even a jaguar in size. That's not an opinion, it's just the reality of nature. Sure, some dogs get big, Great Danes, Mastiffs, even wolf dogs bred for size, but they're all the same species, domesticated and designed by humans. Not one of them evolved in the wild to be what they are. Big cats are different. Every one of them, lions, tigers, jaguars, leopards, is its own species. They didn't come from breeding programs. They came from millions of years of evolution, having been shaped into elite, solitary hunters. Their size wasn't optional. It was a survival advantage. Wolves are the biggest natural canines we have left. The Northwestern wolf is the heavyweight. And even then, the largest specimens barely hit 80 kilograms. That doesn't come close to a 200 kilogram lion or a 300 kilogram tiger. And foxes, coyotes, jackals, they're efficient predators, but nothing about them says apex. If you're waiting for the dog equivalent of a big cat, you won't find it in the modern world. But that doesn't mean nature didn't try. It did. And when it did, it created something huge, powerful, and short-lived. The big dogs were real, and they lost. The reason has a lot to do with how predators survive. Most of today's large land predators fall into one of two categories, the pack hunters and the solitary ambush predators. Those aren't just habits, they're entire evolutionary strategies, and they shape everything from body design to behavior. Canines, for the most part, are pack hunters. Wolves, doles, African wild dogs, bush dogs, even the dingo and the New Guinea singing dog they all fit this model. They rely on teamwork to bring down prey larger than any one of them could handle alone. That's their edge. They don't overpower their prey. They wear it down. And that's why size isn't everything. When the kill depends on endurance and group coordination, being huge isn't an advantage. It burns more energy, slows you down, and doesn't actually help in the final moment of the hunt. These animals aren't tackling prey head on. They're chasing it until it collapses. Look at their anatomy. Long, narrow legs, stiff wrists that can absorb the pounding of long distance running. Big, blunt claws built for traction, not slashing. Their whole body is designed for movement, not grappling. And once the prey is down, or at least too weak to fight back, they start eating. That's not poetic, but it's effective. These predators don't need to kill cleanly. They just need to kill eventually. Which is why their teeth are built more for crushing than slicing. Massive carnassials rip through sinew and even bone, turning the entire carcass into calories. It's a strategy that works, but it also locks them into a certain physical mold. Going beyond that didn't offer an advantage and evolution doesn't reward excess. It rewards efficiency. That's why the big cats went in a completely different direction. Ambush predators play by different rules. They don't run their prey down. They stalk, creep, and then explode. One shot, one pounce, and it's over. Or it's not. But either way, the kill has to happen fast because there's no second wind coming. That's why they're big. They don't have a team. They don't have backup. When it's go time, it's all on them. Which means they need the muscle mass of several smaller predators packed into one body. And that size only works because their strategy is short and violent, not drawn out and exhausting. Their anatomy reflects it. Heavy limbs built for grappling. Retractable claws, razor sharp and curved like hooks. Shoulder joints that actually allow the front legs to encircle and hold prey in place. That's something canines simply can't do. Their joints don't allow it. Cats don't just bite, they tackle, they wrestle. They use their body like weapons and their arms like arms, not just legs. And they can afford that bulk because they're not chasing anything for miles. They creep through forests, using every bit of cover they can find, getting close enough to strike. That's why most ambush predators come from wooded environments. Trees, brush, tall grass, all perfect for hiding. Even their senses are adapted to it. Smaller snouts because they don't need that massive olfactory range. Bigger eyes, stronger ears, 
They're built to focus, not to track across distances. And that shorter snout also means one other thing, more bite force. Their jaws are made to deliver one fast, lethal bite. The canines are long and deadly. Ironically, felines have bigger canines than canines, especially in species like the clouded leopard, which for its size has some of the largest fangs of any living cat, almost saber-like. Every piece of their body is tuned for ambush, not for chasing, not for teamwork, just raw, silent power. And that's where evolution split. One path favored endurance, cooperation, and lean efficiency. The other favored stealth, strength, and solo takedowns. When it comes to size, ambush predators had a reason to go big. Every extra kilogram meant more muscle behind the pounce, more force behind the grapple, and more control once the prey was in their grasp. Evolution kept rewarding it up to a point. The bigger the prey, the bigger the predator needed to be, and the cats were built for that arms race. Canines weren't. The bigger they got, the worse it got for their hunting style. Long chases burn calories fast. A heavier body burns even more. A lion can win or lose a hunt in a few seconds. A wolf might have to chase for kilometers. There's no room for unnecessary weight. Even if a dog did get bigger, what would it do with the extra muscle? Their claws don't slash. Their shoulders don't rotate the way a cat's do. They can't grapple. They don't pounce. Their only real weapon is their bite and they already have a strong one. The strategy is simple. Wear the prey down, then bring it down. No sudden finish, no precision strike, just exhaustion. And that's why evolution kept them where it did. Wolves reached a size where the numbers worked. Big enough to survive the cold, strong enough to pull down decent-sized prey, but still light and fast enough to run the distance. Any bigger, and the trade-off wasn't worth it. There's no reward for chasing down a deer if you burn more calories than you get back. There was a time when massive, dog-like predators walked the earth. And they weren't just big by canine standards, they were big, period. One of them was called Epicyon, and it didn't mess around. It lived in North America around 10 million years ago and could weigh over 140 kilograms. That's heavier than most lions and built nothing like a modern wolf. It had a huge, powerful head with jaws made for crushing bone, not slicing, not stabbing, just breaking things. Its skull was so massive and broad that it's often compared to that of a lion, though the rest of its body was still unmistakably dog-like. Epicyon wasn't alone. It came from a group known as the Borophaginae, the so-called bone-crushing dogs. These were not your average pack hunters. They were bulky, top-tier predators that took on large prey and ate everything, including the bones. Their jaws were specialized for exactly that. They were efficient and brutal. And for a while, they dominated. Even before them, there was another group, the Hesperocyaninae, early dog-like creatures that were a bit more primitive, but on a similar path. These three branches of ancient canines, Borophaginae, Hesperocyaninae, and the modern Caninae, all existed at the same time, mostly in North America. Three evolutionary experiments, all competing for dominance. The Borophaginae started small, like the others, but gradually evolved into larger and more specialized predators. Their bone-crushing jaws gave them an edge. They could make full use of every kill, extracting calories from places other predators couldn't. That efficiency let them push the limits of size. Eventually, they outcompeted the Hesperocyaninae entirely. One branch gone. But as the Borophaginae kept growing and pushing into that heavy, hyper-specialized role, the Caninae, the ancestors of modern wolves and dogs, stayed leaner, more flexible. They didn't need huge prey. They didn't need massive jaws. And because of that, they didn't need to get enormous. They played it safe. And that may have saved them because everything changed when the cats arrived. For millions of years, the Americas belonged to the dogs. The big cats hadn't even shown up yet. It was a canine continent ruled by bone crushers and pack hunters with no felines in sight. Then the migration happened. 
members of the cat family originally from Eurasia made their way into North America. At first, they were just another competitor, but it didn't take long for them to start climbing the food chain. Unlike the big dogs, these new predators didn't rely on stamina or teamwork. They brought a completely different playbook, stealth, power, and precision. And when they moved in, they didn't just coexist. They started eating the same prey, the exact same prey that the biggest dogs relied on for survival. That's why the wolves we have today are lean, medium-sized, and built to run, not fight alone. They come from the branch that stayed adaptable, the ones that didn't grow too big, didn't specialize too much, and didn't rely on prey that might disappear. The giants vanished, the bone crushers failed, and what's left are the canines that figured out how to survive without going head-to-head -head with the cats. It's not that dogs can't be big, they've done it before. They just can't stay big, not in the wild, not for long. The strategy doesn't hold up. Nature tried it and the cats outplayed them.